Having a product that stands out on Amazon starts with your product's identity. I have over 120 items on Amazon's platform and those items would not be seen if I didn't use the best description and keywords to identify what I am selling. So let's talk about getting your first product listed on Amazon. The first screen that you're gonna see, I'll put a little screenshot up here. The first screen that you're gonna see for listing a product may be slightly confusing, but you're gonna go down to the bottom there and you're gonna click on I'm adding a handmade product and you're gonna start there. You're gonna start by selecting your category and I recommend that once you figure out what category you fall into, that you start it. When you click the star, it favors it and if you start from scratch again, you will have that jump to the top and you won't have to search for it again in that big category listing that you just went through. There's also a new listing generator, which is AI, and I kind of played around with it and as long as you give it enough information, it will generate a pretty decent title and description. Definitely read through it and make sure that it's included everything about your item and that it's truthful in what you're actually offering. You can drop a photo in as well, so that will help with the AI to make sure that it's including the right information, but you definitely wanna proofread anything. Update it to be your own personal vibe and tone that you would use for your shop. So that's one way to do it, is you can start with the AI listing generator or you can just start from scratch and do it like manual as you're used to doing. So there are a few fields that you have to fill in. Those will be highlighted in red. If you don't fill those in, you can't progress to the next screen. So it's definitely something that you wanna look at. First things that you have to fill in is your product title. So let's kinda of go over that a little bit. We talked in the first video about how your product title needs to start with your brand name and it has a certain number of characters that it's limited to. But let's kind of get into that in a little more detail. I'll drop a screenshot again of one of my titles and we can kind of break that down. So I start with my brand name. That was something that Amazon recommended in a recent handmade webinar that I attended. They definitely said starting with the brand name is a good idea. That way, if someone knows my brand and comes on Amazon and types it in, it will definitely show up all of my listings and not just one or two. So Amazon recommends keeping the character count under 200 characters. I don't know exactly how many it's allowed, but you definitely wanna make it readable and not so long that your customer gets lost in reading the title. It kind of works the same way as Etsy that you wanna add some keywords, but you also want to make it relevant and very readable for someone. So I tend to put like Stormy Creatives, mini dot stickers, comma, decorative planning stickers, you know, comma, 468 total stickers, two sheets, that kind of thing. You definitely wanna keep it descriptive so that it highlights the important features of your product. This is another place that you don't wanna use special characters. If you're gonna use a number, like if I'm gonna put 0 0.03 inches in diameter, I'm gonna put zero point, like decimal point three, and then the little inch uh, icon, like the double quotation, and then type out diameter. I'm not gonna type out the three and the zero. You wanna make it super readable and it's just easier to see when it's numerals. You don't wanna use any special characters. I wouldn't call the quotation thing like a special character. So keep that in mind when you're formulating your title. Like we said, we want it to be very descriptive about your product. You wanna include, you know, if it's a set of 10, you wanna make that very obvious in your title. We know exactly what we're buying. If I see something that is $30 and it's a picture of one, one little thing and I'm not sure what that means, I may scroll on by. So just keep that in mind when you're working on your title. Seeing that you don't wanna use any commentary like bestseller or sale or promo. You also don't wanna use anything that is gonna be time bound like you know, new because it's only gonna be new for so long and what really is new. You wanna make sure that your title is very descriptive and doesn't include any filler fluff. It's just gonna take away from your title for your product and draw the attention away from the item, the information that is actually important. And I typically include the stuff that is super important because other items can be included in the search terms, which we'll talk about in another video. Okay, so there's some other fields on your first page here that will already be filled in and that's based on the category selection that you made when you first started listing your item on that very first screen. So you won't need to change any of that and that should be locked so that you can't change it. If you needed to change that, you would just exit out and start over. One of the other things that's available here is variations. Variations are gonna be things like colors or materials or sizes and you're just gonna select yes or no. When you do that, it'll open up another screen later that you can fill in all the different variations 
variations that you have. And we'll talk about that in another video, but this is just so that they know, so that Amazon knows that you need that variation screen to show up. Let's talk about the brand name. This is like one of the last things on the listing. So hopefully you're already brand registered. If you're not, that is something that you will need to do because it gives you an extra round of protection. So brand registry is like Amazon's version of a trademark. So it protects your intellectual property. It protects your brand name. It protects your listings. And you definitely want to have that if at all possible. So to get brand registry, basically you need a trademark from USPTO. It can be pending. It doesn't have to be active because it does take about a year to get a trademark fully registered. So once you apply and you're available to get a trademark and we can talk about trademarks later and some more in the course that I'm planning. But once you have that trademark serial number, then you can enter that into Amazon and that will get you brand registry. If you haven't done that yet, if you haven't started your trademark, you can either select it as generic, no brand name, which I don't recommend, or you can fill it in exactly how you want it to appear. If you want to type in like mine is Stormy Creatives, I've got a space, I've got two capitals. You wanna make sure you type it exactly how you want your brand name to be registered with the USPTO. If for some reason that you typed it in wrong or you don't include the brand name at all, when you do finally get brand registry and you're able to get a trademark, you will have to completely relist the item. You can't fix the brand name. So then if you've had sales for two years because it took that long to get the trademark, then you lose all your reviews and all your momentum from that listing. So you want to make sure that you get brand registered if at all possible. It is like $250, but it's totally worth it because it protects you from anyone else using your name. And you can just do a basic word mark. It doesn't have to be a logo or anything, just a basic word mark. You can search on the USPTO.gov website. Please, please, please don't uh, respond to any of the things that want you to pay thousands of dollars for them to help you list your item, your trademark anywhere. You don't need to do that. You really just need to do the .gov website, pay the 250 and you're done. You were gonna get a lot of junk mail and people trying to get you to pay them thousands of dollars to help protect your trademark, yada, yada, yada. You don't need to do that. So keep that in mind when you do register that you're gonna get a bunch of emails and a bunch of junk mail in the mail because it will show as the, you show up as the person who owns it and anyone can go into the USPTO and see that information. So just keep that in mind. If we have more questions about trademarks, it's definitely something we can discuss in the course. Or, you know, if you have very specific information, you can always leave a comment down below and we can we can kind of chat about it. So you want to type it exactly as you want it to appear. So that kind of covers your brand name. So once you enter all the required fields, then you can click next and move to the next screen. So when you do that, it's gonna open up some other information. And there's definitely some fields here you may wanna fill in like color, color map, size, size map. These are may, may or may not be a drop down. I know with um, size map, it comes up as small, medium, large, king, queen, twin, you know, the different kinds of sizing for different items. So that may show up for your product. And if you want to use those, definitely use them because it will help when customers are searching for your product and it works as like a filter. So, you know, if you go into Amazon and look for a red dress, you can filter by color and say red and it will only show items that have red as a color. So you definitely want to be able to put those fields in for size and color so that your customers can more easily find your item. The other things that you're you're going to want to fill in is your package and item weights and sizes. This is so that Amazon knows how big your item is packaged or without packaging will help with your shipping profiles. If you have it set up for your shipping to be by weight, this is going to need to be completely accurate so that it calculates the correct shipping weight, which is a lot of reasons why I chose to go with a price banded structure because I kind of know how much the price is going to play into how much it costs to ship the item. Now, USPS has played with this a little bit. So I've kind of left mine alone because I didn't want to play with it too much. But basically I picked an average over across the United States. I'm on the East Coast. If I ship something to the West Coast, how much does it cost? And kind of took an average between the two. Sometimes it's it's pennies, you guys. So like sometimes it's a little bit over, sometimes it's a little bit under. It all kinds of evens out in the, in the end. Customers aren't going to get upset if you charge them five cents extra for shipping. If for something that you ship on your own, because those prices can fluctuate and we have 
have no control over what, you know, the USPS or UPS or FedEx charges for their shipping. So like I said before, there are some fields that are only available to handmade items like the style and the occasion. So if for some reason you go back and you list a non-handmade item, which you can do in your account, as long as you have one active handmade listing, you can list other non-handmade items and not incur the fee of the professional seller account. So you just have to have one active handmade listing. But if you go back and list some of those products that aren't handmade, be aware that some of those fields may not show up for that type of listing. So also be aware that if you put your items into Prime and ship them into Amazon to be shipped from their warehouses with their Prime trucks, that some of the information you enter may be changed. So if you look at your listing, and I'll try to throw one of mine up here. If you look at how I have it listed, there's a weight that I've entered. And then above that, there's like a little gray number that they've put in. So they will randomly select items and use that to look at the size and weight to make sure that it's correct in their warehouse. They'll do this occasionally. You can also force them to check it. If you fill it in again with something different, then it will kind of force another check um, from what I understand. I don't know how true that is, but that's what I've heard. So you can kind of force force check it to make sure that the information is correct, especially if you're seeing higher than normal fees, you can go in and make sure something hasn't been typed in incorrectly in, in that field. So just keep in mind that if you send stuff into Prime, those may change slightly based on what Amazon measures it at once it's at the warehouse. If you haven't set up your account yet, I have a free three-step checklist to get you all started with your Amazon seller account and applying to handmade. You can get that checklist available at primeforsuccess.co backslash checklist. And I'll drop that down in the description below. You may need to expand that description box to see it, but I hope you guys will apply to sell on Amazon handmade. I definitely wouldn't be where I am without it. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.